Hello Kapamilya Sports Fans, this is Migs Busos and nandito po tayo ngayon sa ABS-CBN Sports YouTube page and patuloy pa rin po ang ating live coverage and interviews, ang ating coverage and interviews para sa 32nd Southeast Asian Games and for today makausap po natin ang ating Olympian pole vaulter, best in Asia, all hail the king of Asian pole vault, walang iba kundi si Ernest John EJ of Vienna, he's right here, transit you, in transit. <laughs> Yeah, that's very flattering the way you introduced yeah, me. Thank you. Thank you so much, EJ. Um, of course, um, uh, where do I where do I begin? Of course, how did you do it? Uh, despite all the conditions, despite all the odds, paano ba, pa, paano ba makakuha ng gold medal kahit napakalas ng ulan? Well, I have a job to do. <laughs> that's what I came for. <laughs> I didn't travel all the way from Europe to lose. <laughs> so I need to do it one way or another. That's right. Okay, so I, I I will ask that first, no? Because, um, it is there, there are a lot for for the common eye from the outside looking in. Of course, you have a you have a vault, you know, you have a pole. Maraming mga pweding mga safety reasons, safety issues. Pero buti na tuloy siya. Ano yung nangyari on ground? May mga nag contest ba na? Hindi dapat pagpaliban natin to the next day. Pero eventually na tuloy siya. Um. So the first part of the match when it started raining uh, we were asked by the officials like oh so you guys want to go or not and everybody seems to be like oh yeah let's go then I made the bar in my second attempt and then the Thai guy the second Thai guy missed he he ran through and then for some reason the second attempt of the other Thai guy was postponed uh, normally the series of flights should be done um, then we waited uh, they said, okay, we'll see how this goes, how the weather plays out, and hopefully, you know, the weather cooperates and we tried to, to attempt the bar multiple times, but due to the rain, it, I think we stopped for at least an hour, at least an hour. And um, we didn't know if it was even going to push through. So the Thai team, they wanted to postpone it the next day, um, but the officials are actually the ones to decide if you postpone it or you actually continue then uh, I, I think after a couple of a couple more minutes uh, the official came back and they said no i'm we're pretty sorry we can't postpone it we need to finish it today then uh, i was uh some 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 stuff happened between that time that kind of triggered me and then yeah, I, I was done. I was supposed to to like pack up and, and go back. You know, as I said, I I just wanted to win. That's uh that's what I came for. And uh, there's really not much point for me risking it. But yeah, there there's some stuff that kind of happened between the game, which which made it a little bit more interesting for me. If you could disclose in a nutshell, ano yung sabi mong trigger? <laughs> <laughs> mo I mean, eh. you know, uh, I, 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 was, I was looking for something to make me tick, but I didn't expect it to come in a way like that way. Um, it's all fair game, um, but I thought we're all friends in, in the field, you know. Uh, I was even carrying the umbrella for the other guy, for the Thai guys, even though we're competitors, and I'm, I'm helping them out. I'm like, okay, the wind, how it is, like, I was, you know, being friendly. We're, we're vaulters. We're normally very friendly to each other. But then suddenly when uh, they decided, well, the official decided, that, okay, we need to start, they skipped the height to put me as the first jumper. So I was like, what happened? We, we didn't talk about skipping. I, I get it. It's part of the rules. But I've been sitting for an hour. I'm cold. You know, I, I, I was cold. So I'm like, they wanted me to to falter in that like i get it everybody wants to win but guys there's you know in a way delicadeza i guess whatever it is as, yeah. as, in, as long as within rules but that kind of ticked me off and i said you know i, I don't I, I don't like this and i was telling to elijah uh the other filipino bowlers like they don't do that like i've i've been very nice i'm like i've been helping them out but i wasn't the athlete that was actually one of the coaches there uh, their coaches like that made the call and the athlete actually didn't want to do it he came up to me after and said well you know it wasn't my it wasn't my call to make it was just like i was following orders and uh yeah that kind of ticked me off I, I was jumping and jumping i actually didn't know the height <laughs> i was just like saying yeah. next height next height next height i was like i was losing it 
until uh, kind of cooled down after the uh, the third time I broke the record. I was like, I'm, I'm getting tired. So I, I just asked my, my coach, I was like, what, should I, should I go one more? It was like, you think you have one more? I was like, I think I have exactly one more and I'm, I'm done. My legs are gone. And normally, if that thing didn't happen, I would have stopped at 540 because I've won at 540. You know, second place was 520. Why, why bother to jump 550, 55, yeah. 60, 65? Yeah. It isn't, you know. But I guess you know that that's one of those moments, like just like Michael Jordan said, you know, it became personal. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it worked out my way. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. Uh, at least I know I still have that <laughs> a little bit of angst in, in me. Yeah. So, yeah, happy, happy, and proud of that. Yeah. Well, wow. Ah, uh, dami no, daming mga well, mga information that we're digesting right now. Of course, um, na na basa naman natin na sa balita. But thank you so much, EJ, for sharing it firsthand. You, I took that beep personally. <laughs> yeah, that, but that's that's the competitor in you. You know, I get that. You know, with a lot of things that are going on, magkakaibigan kayo, and then, marami, marami. But you know, as a competitor, you know, you pulled through, you made the jump. Nobody beat you in five six five, and you are the gold medal, uh, gold medal winner, uh, in your event. EJ, tanungin ko lang, in your previous experience, ang experience ka na ba ng ganun in your previous competition sa may weather conditions na parang alanganin itong ituloy, ah, pero eventually natuloy niyo pa rin siya? Well, normally they do stop it. Uh, if it's possible to postpone it, normally the officials do decide right away. Uh, we don't normally wait an hour in the field under the rain. Um, but I do understand officials, you know, it's a championship game. Everybody wants to win that medal. It matters more. So it's harder for them to decide. They need to, um, how do you say, inquire with the, their technical directors and stuff. So I get what happened. I, I do understand. But I mean, normally you don't stay in the rain for an hour. Hmm. What, what does it take? You know, for a competitor like you, and dami na nangyari, lumamig ka na, di mo alam kung anong meron, but you still have to give it your best. What does it take mentally? Well, there's a Filipino in me. <laughs> there's a Filipino in all of us, you know. When the going gets tough, we kind of step up and find a way to make it work. And I think that's one of the strong traits that we, we learn as a Filipino living, you know, and just growing up in the Philippines. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, other than just really just stepping up and knowing what I want to achieve in that day, it really didn't have anything more more to that, to get that goal. It really is, was, okay, I need to get this. It doesn't matter if it's the world goes upside down. I still need to get that goal. Like, it was just that mindset going in. Uh, I think that helped me a lot. Overall, EJ, how would you assess your SEA Games performance this year? And when you would compare to your previous SEA Games? I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. Like, uh, I think this has been one of those SEA Games that I didn't expect I would jump that high, considering everything. Like, I, I really didn't. Um, considering all the things that happened, I, I, was, I was pretty done at 540. And I said, you know, the job here is to win. My coach said, it doesn't matter how high I jump. We need to win. That's all we need to. And going into the meet, I haven't really had the smoothest preparation so i'm i'm proud it was it's not a big high like it's 65 it's not yeah. crazy high but all things considered with the rain with the delay with all of this i'm i'm happy i'm, I'm yeah if i could say i'll i'll, I'll say this an eight eight out of ten who do you that 2023 c games dj meron bang ano standard parang sige uh, siguro sa 2023 C Games baka meron tayong mabit meron tayong height na tinatarget what was that like from the game plan perspective there, there was no height really no height um, I was to win that's why I, I opened at 520 which nor I normally don't you know I was like okay in my brain I want to put a couple of jumps in to hopefully be in con you know be a contender because if this competition turns out to be uh, impossible to do and they suddenly stop the meet and haven't jumped any they might say oh well you didn't jump you get zero so I'm, I'm like okay I'm watching those two Thai guys what they do and I'm just jumping with them 
to, you know, make sure that if they make it on their first, I need to make it on their on my first. So we're at the very least we're tied, or I'm leaving. So that's that was how how I saw the competition. No, mm -hmm. no exact high target. No, no records really. That was in my head going into meet. What about the other vaulters, other Filipino vaulters? What could you say about the whole team this evening? Oh, the women's gonna be interesting. I think it's anybody's game. Um, I hope I hope we get both golds like uh, 2019 Southeast Asian Games. That would be um, that would be the goal. Um, I think they're capable of doing it. I don't know who in Natalie or Aliana would would do it, but it's it's pretty it's pretty close. I've seen them train um, two days ago, and everybody's looking sharp. Everybody's ready, and. Um, yeah, it would be an interesting competition to see. Hmm. What What does it feel like, EJ, breaking another record? I mean, I know it's all for the marbles, it's all for the, you know, highlights, and and, and stuff. But you know, to personally live it, and again, now you you broke the Sea Games record. Uh, what What was that like from your perspective? It's It's difficult to explain because. A record defines the best, you know. It's it's not it's not just how you've won. You know, record is a little bit more special in the way that it certifies you to be the best to have ever done it in the history of the games. Which which is pretty you know, in itself really humbling and considering doing it in the rain that just makes it a little bit more special and um that's that's what i'm proud of i i didn't cower down to the conditions that i'm dealt with i i faced it and i'm you know i was able to to make the most out of it i would say and that's why i'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself with that all right so now ej currently as of this interview you are in transit what's next for you what will be the competition what will you be working on right now um, we're working on a longer approach, so uh, I'll be flying back to Italy. I already have training on the 10th um, the next day, so it's uh, it's going to be a busy year for me. Um, I'll open, well, I'll, I'll have a month of training, then um, on the 6th of June, I'll be in Bidgosh, Poland. That will be my, I would say, my, my debut in the European circuit. So. Let's see how how everything turns out and if I can translate whatever I've learned in this uh, in this journey, you know, in this training, in this conditions, and hopefully translate to a better performance going into the season. Uh, speaking of this season, any special goals for 2023? Qualify for 2024 Olympics. Uh, win the asian championship and win the asian games um that's 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 the goal really that's the goal um, it's a pretty big year for me and, um hopefully i'll be able to pull it off all right lastly ej uh i'll give this chance to give a shout out all filipinos everybody who supported you go ahead First, I want to say thank you to everyone who was there in the in the stadium with the pouring rain, and like screaming their hearts out. It was it was amazing. You guys made it memorable. It's a uh, it's a different sensation. Um, such a crowd in a foreign country, and I've always enjoyed that moment. And so, I just want to say and appreciate everyone who stayed. Like I think at least three or four hours during the meet. Um, thank you, and everybody back home watching. Thank you. For supporting us and supporting me uh, in this campaign in the Southeast Asian game. So, hopefully, you continue to support the Philippine team in this coming days. Uh, we'll need all the support we can get, and hopefully, we'll get a good standing at the end of the Sea Games. All right. Marami, marami salamat once again. Filipino Paul Walter Sea Games gold medalist. Last EJ. Nanja bay medal mo, EJ. Check in bag. <laughs> Ah, okay, check in bag. It's okay. It's okay. It, it's gold, <laughs> so I can actually check in. <laughs> Once again, EJ Obiena, maraming maraming salamat. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. Congrats. Stay safe Thank and you. God bless. Have a safe flight, EJ. Ingat.